कितना कितना रोड है रोड है ये It does not mean that the provider of those services has to be the public. Kant is aware of the situation and perhaps that is why the DMIC has sought around 18,500 crore rupees to build the trunk infrastructure. Like drainage, water supply and public transport. One must realize that there is a very important component of the trunk infrastructure. If you don't have good drainage, if you don't have good sewage, if you don't have, if you don't crack the trunk infrastructure, which is commercially not viable, the other component of the private-public partnership will not happen. So the trunk infrastructure to our mind is the key and that is where the government needs to step in. New cities uh, over a 30-year period are very commercially viable. Uh, they take a longer period, they take 13 years, 14 years to break even. But once they break even, then they generate a lot of resources. And from that 13th year to the 30th year, they in fact generate so much of resources that you can make many more cities. But the key challenge here is that you should be able to monetize land value. That is the key challenge. Monetizing land value is not the only challenge. In fact, the list of challenges is a rather long one. From land acquisition to financing to governance. When we come back, we'll see at what the road ahead for DMIC looks like. Braj Bidani Group and Bloomberg UTV present Building India. Raj Bidani Group and Bloomberg UTV present Building India. That is how the future cities of a country would look like. the projections by the DMIC project are anything to go by. It is perhaps the most ambitious project since independence. From building mega industrial zones to building mega cities. The DMIC wants to give the country a complete facelift. But planning is one thing and translating plans into reality is another. As Pradeep Singh, the Vice Chairman and Managing Director of IDFC Project says, master plans are often more violated than being followed. In the history of our country and its cities, the master plans have been less... Chief Minister of Gujarat, I visited China. 50 million houses by 2022. In addition, we are going to develop smart cities and mega industrial corridors. For this purpose, we have re refined our foreign direct investment policy in construction. We are also coming up with a regulatory framework for this sector. We have targeted 175 gigawatt of renewable energy in next five years. In addition to generation, the issues of transmission 
and distribution of electricity are equally important for us. We are modernizing our railway system, including signals, engines, and railway stations. We are planning metro rail in 50 cities and high speed trains in various corridors. Similar is the case with highways which we want to build in faster way. We are putting up new ports and modernizing the old ones through an ambitious plan called Sagar Mala. Similar focus is on upgrading the existing airports and putting up regional airports to enhance connectivity to places of economic and tourist importance. In financial services too, we are moving towards a more inclusive and... Gujarat, a preferred investment destination due to its political stability, strong leadership, pro-business policies and vast talent pool. What's more, its intrinsic entrepreneurial spirit backed by reliable resources and strong infrastructure only adds to the advantage factor. The geostrategic positioning of GIFT will enable operators to service geographically extreme financial markets by bridging far-flung time zones. Accentuating the advantage factors, GIFT is located between Gandhinagar and Ahmedabad and also connected to the fastest growing Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor planned along the NH8. GIFT also provides easy access to the Ahmedabad International Airport via a dedicated road link. Additionally, Metro and BRTS assures access to and fro from all sides.